Hi, welcome back to Winter Time in Colorado. I'm Chef Bob Sargent. Today, we're gonna to make a couple Thai dishes. One, a red beef coconut curry. The other one, a Tom Kha soup. Both dishes are somewhat similar with little subtleties. It'll help warm you up on such a cold day. Let's get back to the kitchen. All right, once again, we're back in the kitchen. Today we're gonna to do a couple things with uh, coconut milk. We're gonna move into some Thai dishes. First thing we're gonna do is just a basic Thai curry that you can learn pretty easily with a little green bean, a little mushroom, a little carrot uh, with beef. And then we're gonna do a Tom Kha soup. Tom Yum is kind of a red chili, shrimp broth and a tom kha usually is made with chicken but i like to basically take a tom yum and add a little coconut to it uh, with a little variation uh, it's basically a tom kha so let's get started i'm just going to chop some things real quick and get get rolling no need those just going to cut our carrots save your fingers i used to always eat the ends i still do honestly but uh it's good for you. Through the magic of television, we already have some shrimp shells, some diced tomatoes, and jalapeno. And we're gonna start a little shrimp stock. We're gonna get that rolling for our soup. And with some of the chickens I've shown you how to roast and make in stocks in previous episodes, we have a little chicken stock for the curry that has um, some green onions, some scraps from the lemongrass, some chilies, some cilantro, uh, pieces of the ginger that we shredded. So it already has a nice flavor to it. Everything that we have left over, we're just gonna add to the shrimp stock. As I said, the chicken stock is already very flavorful. So. Some people just use the green parts of the onion. I like the whole piece. All right, push that aside. We'll do our tomatoes really fast. These are gonna be for our soup. So traditionally they're in pretty big pieces to match the shrimp. Put those over here. Some of these tomato pieces that can just fall out, they're just gonna make a mess later. I just push them in there. The ones that don't, will chop up. But if they fall out that easy, they're just gonna fall out while we're chopping them, so. Get those up out of our way. And we'll need some limes later. It's best just to get everything done while the knife's in your hands. I don't want these green beans to be whole. Maybe halves. Cut them into thirds. You can cut them really small. This will be for our curry. We'll put some of this in our soup later. Top's a little dry into the stock. You can see how it's darker and a little dry. That's gonna be really woody. This stuff is softer. Um, some people eat it in their soup, some people don't. It's a great flavoring addition. I think that when you get the lemongrass, and depending on how thin you slice them, they'll be easier to eat. I think uh, with the lemongrass, and these are kefir lime leaves, the two of them have a really weird taste like fruity pebbles. I don't know if everyone's eating fruity pebbles, but I think most people eat a nice sugary cereal like Fruit Loops or something. I was always convinced that they flavored it with lemongrass and kefir lime leaves. And then these are serrano peppers, really kind of a staple of uh, most Thai cooking. We don't have any bird's eye chilies, so we'll cut these really thin as well so you don't get a big mouthful of a super spicy pepper. Cut my cilantro down like this. I fish through it. I'll try to get the larger stems out of there. It'll have to be perfect, just if there's anything that looks really big and woody. I wouldn't say woody even. Just more of a stick than a leaf or a stem. We'll just chop through that roughly. One of the things that I heard 
about the master chef test. And that's where somebody studies their whole life, does a whole bunch of cooking, and you go in front of a panel of other master chefs and you have to cook a number of dishes from French, uh, Asian Thai, Chinese, I'm not sure. I've never taken the test from what I understand though. But one of the things that the chefs often fail on is Asian cooking because I was told that they cut their vegetables too perfectly. It's just a really fast thing. Most Asian cooking with the chopping, I've been to some restaurants where it didn't even seem like they chopped their vegetables at all. Again, I think we need a bigger pot. But it's just really fast. We're just moving through this and we're going to get started with our Thai coconut curry. We have some masaman curry paste. We have some red curry paste, ginger, garlic. To make it a nice red curry, I feel like the paste don't always do the job and if you use too much paste, you're gonna overwhelm it. So I made a little guajillo puree. Once that gets hot, we'll put some oil in there. And we'll start with some garlic some ginger. Always remember if you're cooking multiple things and you've only prepped a lot, save some for the second dish. I've definitely been guilty of that before where I use everything in the first dish and then I'm like, oh, I have to cut more garlic or more ginger. I use a little bit of both. I'm gonna saute the curry paste with the garlic and ginger so you could see I'm not going to overdo it. Turn that down. Again, you'll feel the, you'll smell, actually you'll feel too, some of the heat of the curry paste coming out. You'll really smell it, but as I said, you'll feel it in your nose as well. Get a little guajillo in there for color. I promise you, you're going to be really happy you did that. You can taste it. It's not too spicy, it's not too strong, so I'm just going to use it all. I've been cooking a long time. Some people, a purist maybe would tell you differently. They wouldn't put that in there. You know, that's a Mexican chili, dried chili. I don't think it matters. It's a very subtle flavor. It's a really beautiful color. We're gonna go with our seasoned chicken stock. Taste everything. It's not salty, just to know. We're gonna put about, that's one cup. It's about a four ounce ladle. Two and a half cups of stock in there and I think that's going to be plenty and as I said we need a bigger pot so after I was done I was just going to add that shrimp stock over here to our chicken stock. And we'll keep that back here out of the way. This is going to be a lot faster than you think. So what we're going to do right now, um, squeeze a lime in there. Again, put the lime piece in there, squeeze another lime got a nice tip for you on limes. When you're buying limes and you're touching them in the grocery store, you want the one that's soft and squishy. The really hard lime, maybe you think that's more ripe, it's not. That means it has a really hard, thick rind and pith and there's not a lot of juice in the inside. As the lime starts to absorb the pith, it starts to really get ripe, it gets much sweeter and it gets more juice on the inside. We have two and a half cups of stock in there. To that, Probably gonna add about one, two, three, four, five tablespoons of sugar. Tablespoon of sugar probably for every half cup of stock. Seems like a lot. Uh, I was working with an Asian chef once and a friend of mine lives in Thailand. We used to work together. And he said that his friends who cook in Thailand and grew up in Thailand said all these Western cooks were like, I can't get it right. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And they said, oh, the only thing you're doing wrong is sugar. And then also fish sauce, very strong smelling. And a lot of people will be like, oh, that's enough fish sauce. No, for this, you probably want a few tablespoons. See, now that seems like a lot. But again, you're going to get the flavor that you were lacking. So I'll put a little water. This is cornstarch. It's about a quarter cup. I don't know if I'll need it all. It's about two parts water to one part cornstarch. Stir that up. 
Something else that I was uh, learned, I was told, is when you add coconut milk to a curry, you should never boil it. You'll see it looks like almost micro beads in the coconut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna thicken our stock a little bit. We're gonna check for the lime. We'll check all the flavors. It should still be really delicious. And then we'll add a can of coconut, maybe a can and a half, to see where we're at. And then it should be done. And then we'll, we'll finish our soup. we get a really close look at this, you could see the small tiny bubbles. That's from the sugar and the cornstarch. And that's, and really the coconut milk is already as thick as you want it. You just didn't want it to be watery, but you also don't want it to be thick like a gravy. So I think we're there with that. We're gonna give it a taste. Your spoon is cold. If you get it in and out of the sauce really quick, it will help cool the sauce so you can taste it. If you leave it in there, the spoon will get hot, the sauce is hot, you're gonna burn your mouth. Oh, it's really good. I think, honestly, the fish sauce isn't jumping out at me, but I can taste it. I think it needs more lime. It'll help set off some of the sweetness of the sugar and the coconut milk. It's not overly sweet either. So I would say about a tablespoon per half cup. This one's pretty thick, it won't shake. Our shrimp stock is going. Uh, as I said in a previous episode, really, with fresh tomatoes, lime juice, cilantro, shrimp shells, those things are going to come together really quickly. Um, and you don't have to boil like you would a chicken stock or a stock that has bones in it. So even though it's boiling, I don't want this to boil. As soon as I put this in, it's gonna arrest the boiling, I think. All right. But it will come back around quickly, so. We're gonna turn it down. I don't want quite all that cream in there. Take a whisk real fast. Get our spoon again. Coconut cream is melted. Coconut stock's incorporated. So when I taste it, I just feel like it needs more flavor. But I know how much flavor is in there. So when I think that, I think it's just a little bit of salt. Maybe a couple teaspoons of salt. That umami, that, that distinctly Thai flavor of fish sauce, not too much. Because as I said, it's really, really, really close. And then from there, I think we're good. I think it could use just a little more sugar after adding that coconut. It's about a tablespoon and a half. I'm gonna stir around. One more quick taste. I think it's there. I think all the flavors are gonna come up and we're gonna move this to the back and we're gonna get started on our soup. Here we are ready to start our Tom Ka soup. We're gonna do a shrimp Tom Ka. As I said, sometimes it has chicken in it, most of the time, but we're gonna do it just with shrimp. Again, through the magic of television, the shrimp stock has been strained and the mushrooms are cut themselves, so lucky me. Um, we have our kefir lime leaves, our curry paste. We're gonna use a red curry paste. We have our ginger, our garlic. We can move this aside when we finish the curry. We have some more guajillo puree. I don't wanna overcook the shrimp. A lot of recipes call for it early and then you add the stock and everything and I feel like the shrimp just get overcooked. I'm gonna saute the shrimp with a little ginger and garlic, get them nice and flavorful. I'm gonna pull them out and reserve them. I'm gonna finish my soup and then I'm going to add the shrimp back to it. So, here we go. A little oil. Not much. Because we don't want the oil floating in the soup. It's not bad to have a little bit. We don't wanna, definitely don't want an oily soup. That is really moving now. Our curry is just on low. It's all those flavors are just coming together really slowly. Not much else is gonna happen to it. And uh, the rest of the flavors, if you taste it right now and you were like, oh, it's not quite right. We're gonna saute the beef 
a little curry paste, the onions, and the vegetables. And then those things are all gonna have their own flavors and juices, they're gonna incorporate with the curry, and then we should have a finished product, which is more familiar to with what you have tasted than what you're gonna have back there right now. Just gonna try to flatten them out, get our garlic in there. And we can use it all. It will be on the uh, shrimp. Um, it'll go back in the soup or some will be stuck to the bomb pan. A little ginger. I might as well use it all. You can hear them going around in there. So I feel like it needs a little bit more oil. The ginger and garlic absorbed it all. Just a tiny bit. The shrimp are all seared on one side. I'm trying to just flip them over onto the other. You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm gonna Pretty much done. Some still have that blue shrimp color. We're just gonna try to get everyone nice and uniform. Anyone who looks like they're overcooking, we can pull them out one by one, but I don't think that's necessary. What this does, it's gonna make sure the shrimp stay nice and tender. So there we go. And they're gonna finish cooking in the soup, so I'm gonna say it's time for them to go. Get our shrimp out. I'd say they're cooked about 90% of the way. Now we're gonna add a little red curry paste. Uh, probably about two tablespoons. We will add our serrano chilies. Not too many, again, we're cooking for an audience. And our lemongrass. We'll save some of that for our curry if we want. Just gonna get that stuff stirring around. Again, you're gonna smell it. It's already nice and hot in there. So we're just trying to break up the curry paste the best we can. Set our shrimp aside. And for now, we're gonna start adding some stock. This is the shrimp stock we made. Had a little bit of the leftover chicken stock in it, just for volume. Turn that off, slide it on over. This isn't as much coconut milk as the curry. It's just a subtle background because it's really, we're trying to make the soup here. So what doesn't come out in the shrimp stock because it was really mild, we're once again gonna add some fish sauce. A couple tablespoons and a little sugar. Again, this isn't quite as big as the curry sauce. So we're gonna add a little less sugar we're going to get some limes. And you can even, they say you can get more juice out of a lime if you roll it first. This one was more firm than this one, so that is definitely something you can do. You can break it down a little bit by rolling it while it's whole. And you can see it's no worse for wear. We're going to add a little salt. It already tastes really good. We're gonna add some mushrooms. They're just gonna boil for a moment. We don't wanna put in too many, but they will shrink. A couple kefir lime leaves. They're pretty strong, maybe five. And then we're just gonna let that simmer for a minute before we add everything else. We'll put that on the back burner and we'll finish our Thai beef curry. I don't know exactly what the rules are, I've seen some curries, green with beef, red with chicken, yellow with seafood. I just kind of wing it and do a fusion. If somebody wanted it really authentic, I would do my best to research it and find out. But I do usually see green with beef, red with chicken, yellow with seafood. Um, so that's good. Our pan is nice and hot. We'll get our beef over here. We have our onions, green beans, carrots. <clears throat> Very simple curry. See it moving around quite well. I don't want to overcook the beef again. I'm going to start with the onions and the carrots. A little salt. 
We know the stock is well seasoned, but now we have to make the vegetables well seasoned, but we don't want to over spice or over season anything. You can see instantly this is stir fry. The onions are starting to caramelize and having little spots or the carrots, we cut them thin enough so they'll still be soft. We don't want them too soft or too blanched. I'm gonna clear out a little space. The beef is gonna go so fast that I'm just gonna do the green beans. Well, while we're at it, I'm gonna add a little bit of this guajillo to the Tom Kha. Let's see, are we missing anything? You can throw in a few chilies if you want, necessary. This is for the soup, this is for the soup, 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 soup. So, we've got this nice and hot. Everyone's starting to cook. Push it out of the way. Tiniest bit of oil, because the pan's already seasoned. What's about eight ounces of, uh, I used a ribeye steak. I trimmed off the fat. Just gonna get it stirred around. Try to get some color on it if I can. It's coming along quite nicely. I'm gonna mix them through. I don't wanna just pour the sauce on until the beef is seared. Again, I want to season that beef a little bit. As soon as I see all the red going from the beef and it start to curl a little bit to show that it's cooked. There we go. It's looking good. Our soup is cooking. The mushrooms are cooked. They still look a little fresh or raw, which is what you're looking for. It gives a different kind of texture. Beef is ready to go. It's starting to lose its juices. So we're just gonna go right in there with our curry. And that's done. We'll just let it hang out and incorporate. Hopefully, uh, maybe it'll thicken up a little bit. If not, um, we still have a little bit of cornstarch. Move this back to the front. It's ready to roll. We're gonna put in our coconut cream there. Consequently, I do think this is the best coconut milk. And as I said, we're not gonna add quite as much. Let's see if we can get a little of that juice in there. Boom. The softer soup. Smash the cream. We have our lemongrass. Now we're gonna add some tomato to it. Still trying to break up that coconut. It's melting ever so slowly. It's a really pretty color. It's like a light orange. Our beef is simmering. All those flavors are incorporating. We have a little tomato here for our soup. Right before it boils, I want to get it up to that point and we'll rescue it with a little bit of the tomato. In we go. Tomato. Our shrimp friends. We have our kefir lime leaves, our lemongrass. So we have our fruity pebble soup. A little scallions, we can add a little to our beef. A little bit of cilantro. Stir that around. Give it a quick taste. Ah, lime juice. Just a little bit. I don't think it needs fish sauce. I don't think it really needs salt. I don't think it needs sugar. It's got a nice light balance. It's a soup. It's something that you want to be able to enjoy a whole bowl of without being overwhelmed. It can be served as an entree or as a starter. As I said, look at our shrimp are just perfect. They should be soft. I pulled the tails off them just because I always see the tails in there and you can eat the tails. I do it often, but you know, you're enjoying a soup and you gotta pull a tail out of your mouth and you're enjoying the soup, you gotta pull a tail out of your mouth. So it's not something I really look forward to. And here now we are done. I'd say the curry is the right thickness. So if you ever have cornstarch and use it and it just sits for five minutes, it's going to turn into um, kind of a slimy paste in the bottom. You just work it with a fork. You stir it around. You'll feel it loosen up. You want to agitate it while you add it so it doesn't form any lumps. 
and that should do it. And you just want it thick enough to coat everything, to stick to it a little bit. You're gonna pour it over rice, and that's gonna help. And I think we're done here. Again, you don't wanna boil either one. We're ready to plate it. All right, here we go. Got some nice Tom Ka soup. Definitely nice tender shrimp, the tomato, the mushrooms, as you can see, as I said, they just look slightly cooked. It gives a nice texture and a different flavor than you're used to. Over here, we have our beef, a red Thai curry, and we're just gonna garnish each one with a little cilantro. Nothing wrong with a little extra lime. And that's it. And you can join us the next episode to do a little more Asian cooking. We're gonna do a shrimp, fried rice, and a chicken stir fry. Both real simple things. They should complement each other. And I look forward to joining you again.